Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're back on the Ford Focus Estate and in this video we will be doing a brake and clutch fluid change using this Sealy automatic bleeding system which I've used before in the past and it's fantastic. So let's get to it. So I have done an oil change today. I have also changed an engine mount and now we are going to be bleeding the brakes. So the brake fluid I'm using on this car, oh, firstly this is, if you don't already know, a 2015 Ford Focus Estate 1.5 TDCI engine. Diesel, of course. You can use normal DOT4, and I do actually have some DOT4 up there which I was going to use, but apparently this needs class 6. So my DOT4, which is the Castrol React, is ISO 4925 class 4. So I thought the whole ESP was something to do with the electronic handbrake. Now the Evoke has an electronic handbrake and I did have to buy a similar, a really watery basically brake fluid for that. But this has a manual handbrake so I don't know, maybe it's got something to do with the ABS pump and all the electrics and I don't really know the system or why it needs it but when you Google the car, go to the manual, it will say that it must be class 6. Well, it gives you the Ford number, and when you translate that into the equivalent, it must be class 6. So, yeah, if you're going to do this, make sure you get class 6. But, yeah, regular DOT4, class 6, you should be good to go. In past videos on the channel, I've used this guy over here. It is a vacuum brake bleeder. You need air compressor. It's brilliant. I really, did. I've used that dozens of times. Saved me a fortune. Super cheap. I think I paid it like ten pound back in the day. I think like twenty pounds now. I picked up this a few weeks ago. On a previous video, I did bleed. I think it was a Mini Cooper, and I said I was going to get one. I had the Sealy brand before. I went with Sealy again. You can get much cheaper. This was like 60, 70, 80 pounds, something like that. There's cheap ones for like 30 pounds and stuff. But I've had CD stuff in the past. I've, I've got lots, actually quite a bit of CD stuff. And it's been good stuff. So I've went with that once again. So you fill this with fluid, put the cap on the reservoir, and then pump this up to pressure. And then you basically go around your calipers, crack the nipple open, the fluid comes out, and that is it. I did this on a friend's car the other week. He jacked the car up. I literally took 15 minutes, did all the brakes, done and dusted. It took longer to get the car off the ground and back on the ground than it did to bleed the brakes. So that you're yeah, very happy so far. So I'm going to try this today on the Ford Focus Estate. I did check the fluid. It was like 2 or 3%. It was quite high. I did take this in to get the air con regassed. He dipped it and said it was 4%. So, I mean, he's using better... He actually showed me the result as well. He's actually using better quality stuff. I've got this little cheap six pound pen thing you stick in and it tells you a number, but the fluid is really dark. So, it, I mean, and I've got the full service history of this car and at no point can I see that ever being changed. So we're going to flush probably the full the full litre. It's, it's way overkill. I've mentioned this in another video. You can probably get away with half a litre, but the fluid is, it's quite dark and I'm going to try and bleed the clutch. I've not looked where that is yet i've got the under tray off the car the car is currently up off the ground on quick jacks there'll be some sort of nipple under there i can undo and the fluid will come out we'll find that later on but yeah so i've got the wheels all off the car so it is a case of just cracking the nipple so if you're going to bleed your own brakes then i'm pretty sure you guys know how to jack your car up now you can do this one wheel at a time you don't have to do all four together but i'm actually doing an inspection today i'm going around the whole car making sure it's all okay so i figured i'll take all the wheels off and do it all together and quite simply and i've covered this in i've done a few of these videos on the channel essentially this is your reservoir so you need to keep this above the backs at all times never let it drop below min because it'll start drawing air into the system not good with this system you don't have to worry about that normally you start at the reservoir and you go to the furthest caliber so in this case it's over here so we are going to go to the back right drum then the left drum and we'll come to the front and we'll go to this caliber and then finally we'll go to the caliber down here that will be all the brakes bled. Once I've done the brakes I will try and bleed the clutch it doesn't really need it the clutch feels absolutely great but there will be a, uh, a nipple down there somewhere. You'll be able to see it from the bottom. They're usually on the side of the gearbox or around the gearbox, around the clutch area. 
Uh, it'll be just, just be a very similar thing, probably get 8mm, 10mm hex. No, you just got to crack open, the fluid will run out, and then tighten it back up and you should be good to go. I don't know why this has all this extra pressure on the gauge. I'm sure I oh, there, 20, I was going to say, I've seen it somewhere. Don't go past 28. So I don't know why they have the blue going in like 40. That seems a bit silly. They should just literally put a, a big line at 28 and say, do not go past that. But I think I went at 20 last time. Probably got a 25 ish today. And uh, yeah, it worked great. So the first thing we need to do is get this cap off. It's already quite loose because I've already been in there and checked with a pen earlier. I mean, look at that fluid, it's, it's quite dark. So when I got this, I did say, why isn't that a vertical extension out? Why did it angle? Surely most cars are accessible from the top. Clearly not. It's actually proven me wrong. So I'm actually grateful that the cap does come like this. You can buy an additional one, which has it going straight up. I might need to grab all of that because you'd be stuck if it comes to the job and you, you can't do it because of that's in the way. I mean, suppose you can remove, you can remove this if needs be. So that's on. What they recommend you do is you pressurize it first with the system empty. It does come with an attachment to tighten this down. So you got to make sure that's nice and tight. So let's pressurize it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I can't hear nothing. So. Just depressurize it. So, like I say, I'm gonna put the full the full liter in. Flush all that nasty fluid out. I'll try not to spill it. Oop. Nearly. That ring's gonna fall off, isn't it? And what I'll do is I use this bottle. Use a yeah, you can see. I'll use this bottle to put in the old fluid. Let's get this pressurized. That should hold, shouldn't leak. There's fluid in the line. So between here and the reservoir, there's absolutely no chance of any air getting into the system. So literally you're done. That is it. All you have to do is go to each caliber, which I'll be doing the back left so the near side rear first so at the near side rear drum um these are pretty rusty so that is the nipple on the back if you guys can see and this is what we need to bleed so if you remove this cover that's went somewhere this is what we need to remove. Well, we need to get a spanner on that and open up slightly and the fluid will come out of here. So, I have already soaked these in WD-40. So I'm going to put a bit more on. Because I have a funny feeling this is going to break. So I'm going to use this 8mm socket, I'm going to put it over the nipple and try and release it. Now, worst case scenario, I snap it off and I will have to, well, clamp the hose first 
and secondly go and buy some new pistons now i don't want to have to do that i shouldn't have to they looked fairly okay when i replaced the uh, brake shoes in the rear a few months ago so i'm hoping it'll be okay but i'm just gonna literally put this on and try my best not to snap it all i'm doing here is i just want to turn it a fraction just to make sure that it's loose once it's turned i will then get the hose on and then keep turning it until the flu comes out but i'm just basically trying to crack the nipple loose so let's give this a go no idea if you guys can even even see but it's on oh it's tight i think that's gonna i think that's gonna snap sometimes you just have a feeling and Mm. Let's try again. Oh, it moved, I think, on oh, the nipples twisting. Which I'm talking from experience here. I've brought these before. <laughs> Turn them well a fraction, but I don't know if that. Oh, not with flu coming out, so that's good enough for me. How is the flu coming out? Oh, I've broke it. I think I've snapped it, guys. Let's see if that stops it. It was only turned. Not even a fifth of a turn. But the system is pressurised, so that could be the reason. It stopped. So this is my old brake bleeder. And in theory, if I put this onto the nipple, the fluid should run down and be caught in this jug. Let's give that a go. So my setup is if you guys can even see this, this is probably really dark, but I have a 8mm spanner on the nut and then I've got the end of that tube on the back of the nipple. So when I give this spanner a quarter of a turn, the fluid should start to run into that jug. So let's give it a go. Right, so managed to get the fluid going very slowly. So I had to use my quarter ratchet, the my little spanner. It's only got two sides. Now you do not want to round the nut. Now there's a special spanner you can get, and I do have them, but I don't have an 8mm. I did have a full set, but I'm missing the 8mm and I think it's the 8 and the 6 or something, like the double sided. So I don't have the special spanner you use. So I couldn't turn and have the hose on at the same time. So I've turned it and then chucked the hose on. So a little bit's dripped out. The fluid is moving very slowly, but I don't know if I can get another bit of, see if I can get a bit more of a turn on the. So I need to apologize about these angles because they're not the best. I made a mess. So it's working though. What I've done is I doused it at WD-40 I tightened up the nipple, WD-40, quickly undone it, closed it, and I did that two or three times, WD-40 once again, then opened the nipple, about, I would say about a quarter of a turn, quickly put this on, and as you can see, it's 
coming out perfect now. So this container can hold a litre. So I'm probably going to run this to about this line and then I'll go over the other side off camera because it's you can't see much anyway. And probably come to about here and then I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to do the front. So it's working, got a nice steady stream. It's nice and clear now, I don't know if you can see it on camera. But it's it's crystal clear. It looks yellow, but it's it's not. It's it's perfectly fine. So I mean that's that's what colour came out. It's pretty dark. So I'll leave that another minute maybe. Now I know if I undo the nut on the back of this another quarter turn, that will fly out, which is what you want. But I haven't got nothing to fasten that nipple back up without physically pulling this tube off. So when I pull this tube off, it squirts out, as you can see on the back, kind of everywhere. So I don't really want to do that again. So I'm quite happy just to wait another minute or two. So this one took, well, I kind of expected it, if I'm honest. Can you spot anything new? So yeah, the cylinder, nipple snapped off so this can happen so this is your cylinder and as you can see look at the corrosion on the back of that and when you try to undo the nipple it just snaps clean off funny enough after it snapped oh to make it squeeze that after it actually snapped no fluid came out the nipple so it's actually also not only is the nipple damaged and you you could drill it out and maybe replace the nipple but it's blocked on the inside so for £20, I went out and just got a brand new one. Just wipe up that brake fluid, so it destroys the floor. Um, yeah, so it's all bled, this one's all done. Easy to replace, to be fair. You just pull the drum off, clamp down on this hose so no fluid can come out. And you remove this nut at the top, which gives you some flex in the cable. And then you just remove the two bolts either side and then obviously the brake line and this extra bit of cable gives you the flexibility to pull the cylinder out so you can remove it put your cylinder on put it back together this isn't a video about doing that so i won't really cover that in too much detail There's, there'll be videos on youtube if you guys do the same thing i've just done i mean th these cars are just rock boxes I, the, this car is nine year old and you figure it's 20 year old. I've worked on cars twice as old as this and oh, I don't know, it's a Ford thing I guess, but that's all done. I can put the drum back on and call this done. So you guys are in a weird place. I've um, I've got a, two lights and a camera. I'm trying to see what I'm doing. I could turn the steering wheel so I can get a better angle, but then the lights and the camera won't hold on. So pretty tight come on that should just come off Here we go right so this is a nine is it a nine yeah, it is. What a funny, funny um, size. So you're gonna need nine mil for this. Please don't break. This is the shops, and I'll shut. Is it a nine? Yeah, it's tight, but it's a nine. Oh, that was um, that was a bit scary. Oh, it's coming out. All right. So it's just going slow at the moment. You can see just going down the line, and you can see the colour. It's pretty dark. 
So I'll just give this a bit more of a turn. Easier said than done if you can't get in. Right. So I've just tightened it again just to clean the threads you guys can't even see. Right. So what you want is like a nice steady stream. There we go, that's nice and quick. So I'll let that run for a few minutes. It's pretty much clear already, but uh, I'll leave that running and then I'll come back when it's, I'll come back once it's done. So that's that one done. I've tightened it back up, put the cap back on and cleaned up. We nearly have, well, we're getting close to being full. So yeah, that's it. Next one is the driver's side. And that'll be the last one. This is the driver's side, the last one. We'll get this cap off and bleed it. You can use a screwdriver, but you risk piercing it. So I tend to just use the end of the screw, the end of the spanner. This one's really, it's like melted on. Come on. Yeah, that was glued on. All right. Here we go again, I've just put some more WD-40. Can't stress enough, WD-40 is your friend. Definitely go heavy on it. Right, here we go. <laughs> Ooh, hoo, hoo. Dirty. That, um, that made me jump. actually stuck on so we get the tube on and give it maybe a quarter turn here it comes there it goes not that you guys can even see it probably on camera but it's, it's going and it's coming out pretty fast all right it's felt pretty good so I'll just close that off. And that's all you need. When you remove that, just hold it up and let the fluid drain back into the container. I tend to just hang it up somewhere high. Put the cap back on. And then clean up your mess. So, we're all done. As you can see, I mean, I did release the pressure when I went to get the cylinder. So I did do that back corner and I probably used about one or two PSI. And then I pumped it at 20, say 22. I did the rear, two fronts, quite a lot, almost out of the best part of a litre. There's not really much, there's much left. There's a little bit left in the bottom end. So, and I've used, six psi maybe so you could crank this up to 25 and never touch it so that's good so it's worked the next thing to do is to depressurize the system i get it down to zero let's see if i can get this off Oh, didn't expect that to leak a bit of fluid. So I think the reason it leaked a little bit of fluid is because of the pickup tube that goes down inside. So really what I should have done is just left that cable attached. Didn't do no harm. But yeah, that pickup tube, I think that just sucked up a bit of fluid. So that's all being clean now. But what I'll do is top that back up and I'll show you guys the difference in the colour. I think you guys will agree. It looks a lot better. So there you go. Brake fluid flushed. Top back up to the max. It was only a little bit low. Barely needed any brake fluid to be honest. 
what's left is a tiny little bit in the bottom so we've basically flushed a full litre so I'm guessing that line means a litre so yeah old fluid new fluid I've been round inspected all the fittings everything is okay nothing is leaking so the next step will be to put the cab on put the wheels back on start the engine pump the brakes a few times Check the fluid level if you wish, but you'll know by the feel of the pedal. As long as the pedal feels okay, I'm going to take it for a drive around, 5-10 minutes, come back, check the fluid. If that's okay, perfect. So, yeah, that's uh, the end of that. That was a bit of a nightmare. I kind of I kind of knew that I was going to do that. I, I just, you could feel it when you were when you're putting the pressure on it. I thought it was going to snap. But if it's if it's at that point, you should really replace it anyway. And the shops are still open. It's getting on a bit now. It's like nearly six o'clock, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up. So I'm gonna put the wheels on, do what I've just said I'm gonna do, and we can call this one done. So I think I've kind of covered most of the stuff. Watch a few videos, you'll you'll get the gist. Be prepared that you need to replace cylinders. They they do fail apparently after nine years with these cars, but they do fail. So yeah, that's pretty much it. As long as you fill this up, make sure this is always above the main and you go from the furthest to the closest, you should be golden. Let's have a look. Wow. So that's what we've taken out. Pretty darn disgusting. That's pretty dark. That's probably not been changed in many years. So well, you can tell by the, the rear uh, cylinder and the fact that it's corroded. It's not been open for some time. The next time someone does this on this car, all these have been lubricated and obviously moved. So these nipples should be good. If you do this every couple of years, you should have no problems. This has covered the basics. And like I say, watch other videos on YouTube, put it all together. And then with all that knowledge, you should be able to go out there and tackle this yourself. So with that guys, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Like always, please like, subscribe, comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one.